and how interesting it is for history and political science to observe that how this framework framework of guilt, admission, repentance can transform itself into defiance and denial by the acquisition of power. As soon as Kemalis gained the foothold in, in Anatolia, this entire mood of Turkish confession, Turkish admission of guilt, Turkish willingness to make even the Turkish wartime minister of economy, <coughs> Javid, is on record saying that not only we committed the crime, we owe reparations to the Armenians. This was the mood, ladies and gentlemen, in Turkey in 1918-1920, before the rise of Kemalism. Now, in the light of this fact, that before a defiant, rebellious Kemalist movement, and if I were a Turk, I would celebrate Mustafa Kemal. I think he great, he's a great national hero. He transformed the major military defeat into a major military spectacular victory. And because of that, history is suffering because that gave them the arrogance to Turkish historians to deny the great crime of genocide. Now, I like to proceed then with the problem of documentation of the Armenian genocide in the light of evidence supplied by these conditions I outlined. Defeat, demoralization, and admission of guilt. I think the fact that the denial of the Turkish geno Armenian genocide is unrelenting. I submit to you that the documentation of the Armenian genocide acquires a major significance. In other words, we cannot afford simply to document the genocide, but it has to be a kind of documentation that is what I call compelling. It precludes any possibility of denial. In other words, Armenian historians, because of denial, are obligated to provide the kind of documentation that compels, that provides no alternative to admission of guilt. So what is the definition of compelling evidence? In my definition of compelling evidence, there are four constituent elements. Number one, <coughs> the evidence has to be reliable. Number two, it has to be explicit. Number three, it has to be incontestable. And number four, it has to be verifiable. Let me give you illustrations about these four constituent elements of compelling evidence. Reliable. I would submit to you, and as I have indicated in my outline, you, you have observed that I didn't mention any Armenian sources of evidence. Armenians are victims, and therefore, by definition, they are suspect. Even the multitudes of Armenian survivors' accounts are very powerful documents, but because they are victims, the problem of bias is a problem. Therefore, I dispense with the utilization of Armenian sources. They are, by definition, not reliable. So what is left? Turkish documentation, German documentation, Austrian documentation. The reason I am mentioning German and Austria because let me remind you that during World War I, Imperial Germany and Imperial Austria were the political and military allies of the Ottoman Empire. Therefore, the documentation has extraordinary significance. It is the documentation coming from the allies of Ottoman Empire. So let me give you an illustration by what is reliable evidence. The American Council of Harput, Leslie, wrote a book about the genocide. And the centerpiece of that book is eyewitness account of the horrendous massacres of women and children in Harput province. 
his assistant was a Turk. And this Turk told him that he has now evidence that all the Armenians are being taken out, to supposedly to be deported to Mesopotamia, outside Harput city, are being bayoneted by Turkish soldiers. And he wanted to see in person. So not an Armenian, but a Turk, Turkish employee of the American consulate in Harput served as a guide. He took him to all the sites of atrocities and the American consul personally observed the naked bodies of, he says, thousands and thousands of Armenian women and children bayoneted to death in naked position. And he said he spent 12 hours uh, inspecting the sites of atrocities of the Armenian population of Harput. Now, to me, this can be no more than most reliable documentation. It's a neutral American diplomat, and his guide is a Turk. What is explicit? The second condition of <coughs> compelling evidence. Explicit means, was it deportation, or was it massacre, or was it both? There's a difference, ladies and gentlemen, between true deportation, wartime exigency, and deportation as an instrument for an ultimate objective of massacre of the deportee population. The documentation that I'm going to supply to you abounds with evidence that the purpose of deportation was the destruction of the deportee population. Out of more than one and a half million Armenians, there are only 60,000 Armenians left in Turkey today. What kind of deportation, what kind of relocation is this? The third element, incontestable, is that it leaves no room, it leaves no dispute about the fact of the crime of mass murder. And I will shortly supply to you concrete, specific references to that. And finally, I think the most important aspect of verifiability. You can make innumerable arguments denying, confirming, affirming, protesting, but if you are in no position to supply documentation that is verifiable, it is useless.